Welcome back to Strictly Speaking. I'm your host, Carrie McMillan, and today's episode is about millennials. As you can see, we have two millennials here with us today. Luke Price, who was born in 1998, like right after I graduated college. That makes me sad. <laughs> and over here, we have Alan Jr. Pegues, and otherwise as a, known as AJ, who was born in 19, no, 2000. 2000. 2000. 2000. 18 and 19 year olds old. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about millennials, but what is a millennial? So we hear a lot of people, we've seen a lot of articles, a lot of research about what a millennial is and what that consists of. So I'm going to just read a few things that I have found about millennials, and then we're going to get into some really good discussions. Millennials are also known as Generation Y. Um, some people say they are born from 1980 to 2000, so you're right there on the cusp, AJ. And then some people say it's 1977 to 1995. So there's a few people that say a few different things, and that's okay, but mostly it's early 1980s to mid-1990s and 2000. They're often the children of baby boomers. You guys are usually marked by an increased familiarity with communications, media, and digital technologies. Would you agree? Um, increase in a liberal approach to politics and economics. Mm. More open-minded, more open to change, less religious. Only one in four millennials is actually affiliated with a church, believe it or not. Um, known as Generation Me. A few of the terms associated with you guys. Special, sheltered, confident, team-oriented, conventional, pressured, and the big one, narcissism. So, my question to you guys today would be, do you agree with this term, this, this term millennial? I would think, I think that some of the, the words that, are, that you just listed that are associated, I think that they closely follow, I, I agree with them in a lot of, because I think that we have a bad rap. Let's just jump right into it, okay? <laughs> Let's just jump right into it. And let, I think that we have a bad rap. Um, narcissistic, <clears throat> I think I was expecting words like lazy or entitled. Well, yeah. that was another one because there was a book that was written called Why Today's Young Americans Are More Confident, Assertive, Entitled, and More Miserable Than Ever. That's, yes. that's profound. I, yeah, and I'm sure that that guy has a lot of good things to say. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sure that he does, and I'm sure that he's a really nice person. But truthfully, I think that there's a reason that we're miserable. And I think that, I, but I also think that the laziness and the entitlement is like, if you want to put it on a grand scale, it's because America has had a 200 year awesome run. You know, what do you expect when you have, when everything goes good for 200 straight years? And I mean like, yeah, you have the, the falls and stuff, but like ultimately we're doing really, really, really good. And that's because of something that we didn't do because we've been here for like 19 years. So I had no part to play in America doing good for 200. So I was born into this, you know, to where people complain about getting too much cream in their $6 cup of Starbucks. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like, <laughs> that's the troubles that I have to deal with. So lazy, entitled, uh, assertive, those are good words. But they're offensive. But they're offensive. They're offensive. What do you think, AJ? <clears throat> Well, to piggyback off of what Luke said, um, those are some good words as far as entitled, lazy, and stuff like that. But I mean, to speak from a more like narrow step on, because he was he was like real broad with the you know, you know, world and stuff like that. But I think like since we didn't really have to like work for stuff. You know what I'm saying? You had helicopter parents. Yeah, like every, like we were very, well, we are still very sheltered. And we were used to like, you know, when we come home, things being already done and not having to actually do any, you know, work or, you know, manual labor for it. We just feel like, you know, that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's always Handed going to, to be. You. Exactly. So when we get put in that real world and, you know, it slaps us in the face, then we feel like, you know, where's my gas money? You know, I haven't had a job throughout high school. You know, you've always been given it. And then, you know, we just feel like entitled to everything and we are lazy. I'm a victim of it. I'm very lazy. Good but, to know. You know. That's an interesting point. But think about it like this. Think about, okay, so we've had there perhaps, and, and at that point you're dealing with a parenting thing, not a millennial thing. Mm. You know, at that point, like it, like, because mm. for me, for one, and I'm, I'm not hating on anybody, and I'm, but like for me, for one, I got, I had a job when I was 16, 
That's because my brother had a job when he was 16, and my dad got a job when he was 16, and my mom got a job. So I've been working in a grocery store for, I, I worked in a grocery store at 16 and got another job and got another job, and I was, I was toying with that. But aside from that, because we're not talking about me, but um, I wanted to point out something that it may be easier to feel like things can be handed to you because it's easier to do things now. Okay, that's what I take. I take things and like I, I look at it like that because it truthfully, truthfully is because as to where your grandparents and your grandparents and my grandparents, I hear stories all the time about how they had, they were, had to know, walk to school it was in the walking snow. walking to school, <laughs> you know, with their lunch pail and the fishing pole, you know, the whole nine yards and, and like that sounds funny, but it really wasn't that long ago that they were doing that. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it really wasn't that long ago. My so. father-in-law, 78, he grew up dirt, dirt poor. Dirt poor. And had to do those things. That's what my granddad says. Mm -hmm. And when he, so, so like, and now technology bumps that, bumped everything up. Yes. So now it's easier to do things. So not, so, and I'm, I'm just talking about, so you're not walking to school anymore. Now you're driving to school. Mm -hmm. In and a smart car. In a, a smart, smart car. car. There's Teslas that will drive you to school. Yes. You don't even have to be in you don't yes. have to touch it. But like, aside from that, also think about like the household stuff. Like my family just got this robot vacuum cleaner. I, I like This those. is gonna be our next show topic. So yeah. hold your thoughts. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> something else, you were talking about our grandparents, uh, yours and I's for right. sure, um, about that was kind of the industrial evolution, like coming up that you knew growing up, you were gonna be a player in like an industry of some kind. That's how you were going to be successful. And now it's kind of versus an information revolution is what they were talking about. So it's like hackers versus corporations, bloggers versus newspapers, YouTube directors versus studios, mm. app makers versus entire industries. And that's why we're scared. That's why the Gen X and the baby boomers are scared of the millennials because they don't understand it. It's not something, but I really feel like millennials are really just kind of adapting to the times, right. don't you think? Right. So, um, you know. <sighs> but I think as parents, we've adapted to the times too. You're because right. I know when my son was younger, who, he's around the age of you two, mm -hmm. it was a lot easier. And I, I'm just admitting my own flaws here. It kind of, in my opinion, goes back on us. Because when I was younger and he was younger, it was easier for me to let him sit in front of the television and watch video games, play video games for two or three hours. That was the start of it. I mean, he was becoming addicted to technology and it was just an easier life for me. It was easier as a parent. And I know I'm just copping out here, and I'm just, but I'm being real, I'm being honest. But I also think, it, I read somewhere in, in my studies for the show about how, you know, our parents and even us, you know, my kids aren't quite, you're, you started right. earlier than I did, so my kids right. don't really fall in the millennials per se, but it talks about how they just really pushed about self-esteem, self-esteem. Instead of just saying, it was kind of, they said that they almost did it to a fault. So like, we should have just said, we love you. They should have told us they loved you, but they were like, everybody got a participation trophy. Um, they wanted everybody to have this great <laughs> right. self-esteem, oh, right. yeah. um, you know, and I think that we handicapped them well, it's just I think they, we handicap the kids because yeah. right. they don't know how to do things their own. I'm raising my kids a little different. Um, and like I said, some of this is going to fall over into our show that you'll see next. Yeah. Stay tuned for that. But, you know, my 12-year-old my doesn't have a cell phone. So I'm trying to raise them more like I was raised. I don't want him to be lazy. I don't want him to right. feel entitled. I want him to be thankful for what he's got. Right. Yes, he's got yeah. all this stuff at his fingertips, but don't become lazy. Um, so having from what you just said, are you saying that giving him a cell phone would make him lazy or giving him that stuff would make him lazy and, and, and less likely to, because so, I know, so something that a lot of people say is that millennials just run around on their cell phone. They don't know how to talk to people. It's they not just millennials to, though. Yeah. But with that, and, and you're hundred percent true, but since we were born into just running around, moving on cell phone. People are like, this is the worst thing that could happen. They stay consumed on their phones. They're taking pictures up instead of experiencing life. But for me, have you guys ever seen that picture of, the, it was literally like, there's this huge parade and the Pope was dry, like driving by and he was waving at everybody. 
and there's this photo of everybody all had their phones out taking pictures of the Pope, and then there was this one little old lady that was like actually just watching and didn't have her phone. She was living in the moment. Yeah. I feel bad for her. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I think that that's awesome that she's doing that because she can't. doesn't. Yeah, it's great that you you capture that, but she's living in the moment. She's remembering that in her mind. Because let me tell you I something. Can remember it. Yeah, but what if all yeah. of that goes away? It's saying it's, it's not in, in the cloud. cloud. Oh. It's in the cloud. <laughs> we're getting into our topic. We're getting into our topic of our next show. Man, I love but cloud. But another thing that I read is that it's in we. The cloud. This generation is also known as the Peter Pan generation. You guys are living, these millennials are living longer with their parents. They have more debt in college. Like the debt was like in the trillion for millennials. Too? Yes, you could talk about that. I mean, so we're, they're living longer with the parents. They're not getting married as quick. They're not starting families as quick. And wising up. Why do you think that is? As far as the marriage, I, I support the family because I love my family. My little sister, my mom and dad, we all together. I love it. But as far as the marriage, I don't want to jump into something that I know I'm not going to stay committed to. That is the problem. And I, that was part of it because it said that, that you guys are seeing all the divorce rates because people got married so young and they got yeah. married to people they didn't really want to be married to or they got pregnant young or whatever it is. I mean, right. you know, back in uh, my grandfather's times, I mean, you might have been married at 14 years old. Right. And so, and they see there's, there's a rise in divorces and all that sort of thing. So you mm -hmm. guys are putting it off till later. What do you think about that, Luke? Are you going to get married anytime soon, Luke? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I mean, like, I, and I have no clue, you know, what what the Lord will unfold for the next, you know, 10 years of my right. life, but Lord will it. I'll probably go get married for about another 15 years, exactly. something like that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but we live, we live, like, used to, that was a problem. If you were having kids at 40 years old, you, that, that was, a, you would have serious health issues yeah. that come to that. That is not the case anymore. Because of yeah. where we that come in medicine the, the times. Anymore. People are living to 90 and 100 years old right now. 101. 101 years, like, that's not the case anymore. You used to, you were fighting stuff. You would literally <laughs> die at like 65 if you came down with the flu. That's mm -hmm. not the case anymore. Yeah. You've got way more time ahead of you. It's technology, that, it's technology driven. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just to, t like, that's just to, to justify that part why. And, and I think it's a subconscious thing, to be honest with you. I think it's subconscious that I, that I don't, want to get married because I know that I have a long, 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 long time. If I get married and I do what the good Lord tells me to do and what my mama tells me to do and I stay with that woman, me and this woman will be, if I got married tomorrow at, at 20 years old, I'm almost, I'm about to turn 20, I'm going to be with that girl for 80 years. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> Does that make you scared? That's perspective. That's a long time. <laughs> that that's, is a long time. That's kind of scary too. Think about that. <laughs> That's and I tell my scary. kid all the time, you've got your whole life to be married. Exactly. Go do what you want to do and live. Um, so, okay, so here's just a little fun little snippet that I found, and I want to see how you guys do. So, um, this is kind of like pop culture quiz for millennials. I just want to see how good you guys do. What do you think the highest grossing video game franchise to date is? Uh, um, Nintendo. Like a system or an actual like video Call game? Call of Duty, Pokemon, oh, Fortnite. Game. Mario. Fortnite. I, I would say GTA. But y'all probably, you know what GTA is? No. Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. Uh, That's it's... also why millennials are messed up. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. You used to, that get, game, you used to get points for stealing people's cars. Yeah, that game, you if you if you get out your car and go and steal somebody else's car, you like, you like, advance. Because <laughs> it teach, it's basically teaching kids. Wait, it's it teaching what? kids like, Seriously, bad, bad things. things. That's not like you go and rob a store, and you get more points. Okay, so, so another, that's question. another that's another question I have. Do you? Which no, that's the next show. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stop okay. there. But okay, so if you were gonna use a dating app, which obviously she and I are Wait, married. What's the end? Oh, you're gonna dating the app. Later. If oh, it was Mario. Mario. Mario was is Mario. the leading. Like little kids. You know, probably <laughs> why? Because you know. I had a Nintendo, hey, just, and I conquered and went all the way <laughs> to the top level of Mario, Mario Brothers, and I life. loved it. And I wish they would bring back the original, just saying. Okay, so <laughs> dating app. Which term describes a situation where a person is ambivalent about someone they are dating, so they neither dump them or pursue them? Is that called zombieing, ghosting, benching, or haunting? Ghosting. I've been ghosted before. That's the answer. 
Y'all are millennials. You're supposed to know. I know, that. I know exactly. Said, what it is. Said, so they don't dump them and they don't pursue them. Yeah. What are you doing to them? You are leading them on. <laughs> That's called. But is she, what's that? What's that term? That's the question. It's what's either zombie, ghosting, benching, or haunting. I think it's benching. It's benching. You bench them. No, it's yes. not. That's what they say. No, listen, That's what it says. Benching. Because, well, listen, all right, well, I'm going to teach you something. Because <laughs> Snapchat just came, like, Snapchat's been around for a little while. It's, but it's, Snapchat, it's still kind of new, though. It's co okay, I would agree yeah. with that. But Snapchat's logo is a little ghost. Yes. It's a ghost. Uh, that's for so a reason. It, so when, but and when you leave somebody on open, like somebody, you Snapchat me, and I'm like, I ain't talking to you, Carrie. I ain't going to Snapchat <laughs> So I leave, you on, I leave you on ghost. Okay. I ghosted okay. you. All right. I agree. You know, I've so, been ghosted before. Nobody answers my stuff. And we're going to get our next show is going to be great. Make sure you tune into our next show, which is about technology. But if a millennial states they do not want to be in the narrative, y'all say this. I don't want to be in the narrative. What are y'all saying? I don't want no part of it. That's exactly that's right. right. Okay, no so that's it. that. That's it. Okay, if a millennial agrees, a hundo p. What does that mean? If, if, does if they say, I agree a hundo P. I agree a hundred percent. Okay. Got it. Got it. Also and what does T D stand for? T D? Today. Today? No, 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 no. T D. Uh it's either today, tonight, or to die for. To die for. Boom. You know what this proves? Millennials. You have your own language. You have your own language. You have your own language. I don't know who, it's I, savage. I don't know who wrote that stuff. That is savage. <laughs> that is savage, yeah. man. Yeah. Okay, so. Do you want to go through a quick list of yeah. words that we say? Yeah. Okay. I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Okay, I, hear it. Just, I need to take notes on this. Give, 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 give them your top three that would be that would be alienistic to them. Um. And I'll try to come up with three different ones. W, like as far as like acronyms? Yeah, or anything that you would just or did y'all just say? Because we'll yeah. save some for technology. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, something I was that you would say uh, to your friend that you don't want your parents, or they don't know what it is. Um, Go ahead, Luke, throw one in. I just I, would, I, I say I know for a fact. What? that I, I gotta think. Oh. I know for a fact that I, <laughs> I'm gonna sound so weird. Are we gonna I have say, to guess? I say lit. And lit. I say, I say. Oh yeah, I agree. I say I'm I'm big on that lit. I'll say hot. I'll say, that's hot. That's cool. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I even if I'm really feeling around my friend. No, I wouldn't say this stuff in a business meeting or something oh, no. like that. Right. You know, I know how to speak properly. Yeah. <laughs> but if I'm just hanging, if me and Carrie are just hanging out, you know, I'd say. Because it's so, always lit when we're I'd hanging say, out. I'd say lit money. <laughs> I know that's one hundred. Yeah. One hundred. That's one hundred. Me yeah. and my friend Colt. Colt, if you're watching this, me and my friend. I'm giving a little drop there. Me and my friend, we used to say 100 all the time, and you spell that O N E H U N N I D. 100. 100. <laughs> we're learning we something. We said that in high folks. school, though. I, I hadn't said that in a long time. One thing, one word that me and my friends use a lot is for show. For show. For yeah. show. Yeah. You, you, Different in cultures, for sure. maybe. Yeah, yeah for, for show. Like, for show, sure, that's basically like a universal term. Is it, that it, for it can, sure? It's, yeah. But sure. that's the thing, it can for be sure. used in so many different, it just depends on the context of the sentence or the situation. Like, for uh, show. you know, F-O-S-H-O. I text them, you come, you, come, uh, you come to the mall with us tonight, for show. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm going to be there, of course. <laughs> or you got a, uh, or you got a, uh, let me see. What's we, can, we can write a dictionary sure. about well, this. I heard what's one it? lately, and I want to know what the definition is, okay. because I do not, it's extra. Okay. Extra? What does okay. it mean when you're, you're extra? extra? Yeah. Yeah, it's, that one has some different meanings, too. Uh, like, say you with some people and, you know, you get a text from your homeboy because the girl that he's with, you know, she's being, you know, a little loud. He's not liking it. I get a text saying, but she being extra. Dramatic. You already know. She being, she doing too let, much. Let, if well, you, then I'm definitely if extra. If you get called extra. But let me tell you something. Some, sometimes, sometimes that's not a good thing. Sometimes you don't want to be extra because people don't like extra people. I, that's what I was about to say. I don't think that you're it's extra. Not good. Okay, I'm I not think, oh, good. I think okay. that you. I think that you misinterpreted that because when lit. you said you were ex, you're lit. When you said, <laughs> well, you could also that can see different connotations with these words. Yeah, that's it's, why it's yeah, so dangerous. Yeah, it's just very go dangerous. ahead and just. just okay, just, we'll go on. <laughs> we'll move on. Okay, so who do you think influences millennials? I was reading about this, and I want to get your take on it. Who do you think, as far as branding and, and companies trying to reach you guys and companies reaching out to you, who has the most influence in today's, like, okay, in my day, you know, we watched the TV, and the TV kind of 
told us what we wanted to have and what we wanted to do. Who has influence over you guys now? Because I think what the answer you're going to hear me say is maybe different from what you guys say. Okay. So, I think in general, and this does I'm not even necessarily speaking for myself because I like to read and I still like I still listen to my mother and stuff best the best I can. <clears throat> but I think that millennials are most influenced by other millennials. Bam, you know, right. that was it. Other yep. millennials on yeah. because on online, and that is a tremendous downfall. Well, well, it's, it's a last word. Tremendous. I would say that y'all have so much more pressure that we <clears throat> talked about. You know, at the beginning when I said it says that you guys are more pressured than You're before pressure. Pressure. because everything is instantaneous. So yeah. Luke, I know, has his own YouTube channel. Well, mm -hmm. if Luke was a bad person. He may be influencing people in a bad way, mm -hmm. but it does say that, you know, people are more, that you guys, millennials, are more influenced by your peers. Give me some more thoughts on what you guys think, like, um, why you maybe don't agree with the term millennials, or you guys get a bad rap, okay? You do, you get a bad rap, that you're lazy, whatever. Tell us why y'all shouldn't have a bad rap. Like, how are you gonna help the future? Like what your generation? What do you have to offer? I felt, I felt like you were about to. I wouldn't. That. Okay, I agree with the term millennials <coughs> to a certain extent, but at the same time, I don't because you know we we are the next generation. We're we're upcoming, and we have a lot to offer because of you know the technology that's present. You know, and we're advancing. There's so much going on that you know my uh. My dad is kind of bad at this. What takes him five, six steps to do takes me one. That's you know, right. like you know, just as far as like going online and purchasing things like that. Mm -hmm. He loves he loves to read reviews. You know, I'm not a fan of just reading really? and going knowing on your stuff. dad. That that is so typical. Yeah, and when I if I see something's where I like to go watch a little video, if I see how it's working and the benefits of it and stuff like that, I'm just quick to purchase it. You, know? you don't put it much thought process. Like we think I, things yeah. through. We know both ways, though. Right. We know both ways. They only know one way, and that's the way of technology. That's right. You mm -hmm. know, back when we were little, we got a Sears book. That's right. A Sears okay. catalog, and that, and I know you probably th Sears thought they just said Sears what? <laughs> no, they're not. Sears is Sears, Sears, is, Sears at the mall. Oh, Sears. 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 Okay. Corinth just went out. The one in Corinth just went out. <laughs> And they're in trouble too. When was the last time you went in that series? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I don't need. I'm gonna. I'm not exactly. gonna use that because that may date me a little bit because I had gone in there to buy a vacuum. But Sears catalogs came out, and you would go through these Sears catalogs, and you would circle. Oh, I want that toy. I want this toy. Okay. Everything. Is you Sears guys now it's Amazon Prime. Everything's on Amazon. So anyway, just <laughs> saying. Okay. Is there any final thoughts that you guys have? Um, on ask, millennials. Ask, that, ask exactly what you just asked him again. I want to refresh it in my mind. I had something <laughs> okay. good to say, but then we started talking about Sears yeah. and I lost it. Okay, so we're talking about the future and why you guys are, are good and, and y'all's bad rap that you do have. Like, right. tell me why we shouldn't think that way. Why you shouldn't think why that way. Why Gen X, baby boomers should not think scared when and run scared from millennials. Positive. Positive. What what comes positive from your generation? Okay. Well, first off, just to any generation like baby boomer that's watching this, run scared is not the thing that you need to do to the next generation because you're gonna die and we are going to take your job. <laughs> that's how it works. Every Basically. like my grandparents are retired and you took their jobs and now I'm gonna take your job. It's a cycle. cycle it's, I'm not trying. I'm not right. putting you out. I'm not trying to like just make you homeless. But the thing is, is like, that's life. Yeah. So running scared is the worst thing that you could do. Running scared and, and saying, and saying, I don't want to help them progress because they, but the thing is, is why, why, because let's, for instance, your grandparents were probably really, really, really happy to retire and then you take their job. So for the past mm, 180 years that America has been, let's just talk about it, 180 years, it's, it's all ran in a pretty steady flow. You know, people work and then when they get old, the next person steps in. Right. They work when they get old. Now it's uh, people are working and they're still young and I'm getting ready. Okay, so 
in that, let's take it for you're in the advertising, right, and stuff yes. like that, and you're still very young, you still have much life. But I, but I am 20 years old and just started a company in your field. People weren't doing that last gen generation. You're right. Good point. It's, so it's coming. Very good point. Quicker. And that makes you scared when, in fact, you should. That we're not going to know enough to stay up with to them. To hang because to we're hang. because we're approaching more quickly. So here's so here's my question to you: Is why is that a good thing? Is I think it's an incredibly good thing. So instead of running scared, embrace it. Just, yeah, yeah, embrace, embrace it. it. Be like, because there's nothing to work together. Yeah. I mean, because we don't necessarily want y'all to leave where you are. I mean, we can just come in and just do some manipulations to make the company or process or you know whatever it is better but to be honest with you I've never even thought about that I really I've never, that question that you just like having talking about why is it that I didn't know that you guys were scared of it. I just, and I don't well, think that it's a lot of I don't think, of, don't think, don't think it's scared. That, I think it's, it's intimid intimidating. Intimidating. Yes. Intimidating. Better word. Intimidating. Word. But that was on the cover of Time magazine. Let me see if I can find where I had that. It said, um, uh, let me go back to my sheet. I but think that it just means that. It says, that Millennials are lazy, entitled narcissists who still live with their parents. Why they will save us? How mm -hmm. will y'all yeah. save us? Because I think that's what you guys should have been doing. <laughs> okay, then. Well, wow. we didn't have the technology to yeah. do that. That's right. Though. Well, somebody no smarter than you made it. Good point. Good Touché. point. Touche, touche. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit, you know, in talking about the entitled, and this, this was something else in one of the articles talking about everybody just wants a participation trophy. You know, when I was growing up, you didn't oh, get a participation yeah. trophy. Dang it, you either won or you lost. And now exactly. everybody wants the trophy. Everybody wants the crown. Everybody should get this. And why didn't I? And you're also very fame obsessed. I think that everybody, it talks about everybody is reality TV ready at any given moment. Do you agree with that, with your generation? Yeah. I, yes, yes, yes. ma'am. I think, yes. well, especially for me. But you know that that's that's weird because I I and I have that DNA. It's in like it is in inside. To of be me. fame, to be famous. To have attention. I don't really even like the word fa a famous. And that and like let's just be real because like people in Corinth and that means like there's like fifteen thousand people in Corinth. Big deal. But like people are starting to say, I right, that's Luke. He makes those videos and stuff like that. You know. So if you wanted to, you could define that as fame. But I don't. But I think that that's. I think that that is. It's a kind of a binary term because you have Justin Bieber. He's famous. Yeah. Luke, I'm not famous. <laughs> you may be after the show. I like. <laughs> <laughs> I like, but I do like attention. Okay. Attention. Do you driven, think that attention? See, driven. I think that we weren't. I don't know about you, but we did not care about attention as much as they do. Yeah. We didn't. And let me tell you why. Maybe because of. Let me, Let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. You didn't care about attention as much. You didn't care about attention as much as I care about attention is because when you were in sixth grade, Sally didn't post what she was wearing on Instagram. Sally came from the doctor's home and got this new Louis and she put it up and she posted a picture on Instagram. You didn't see that. You didn't no, know you're that. You're exactly right. Okay, mm -hmm. so now me, when Johnny, uh, he gets some new jeans, he gets something cool, and he posts it up on Instagram. Okay, no, no, no. It seems to be a real big thing that people are traveling and doing stuff like that. So when Johnny is up and he's like, ooh, chilling in Paris, you know, <laughs> I'm like, why ain't I in Paris? <laughs> exactly. I'm doing something wrong because I'm still working at a restaurant or something like that. Was, I, and that that would just make me sad. But truthfully, make me sad. it would make me sad because I because Which I Which is hate, very sad because... That's true. That's, I think the world that you guys live in has made you that way because, you know, we didn't have that. And that's a whole different show. But let's br but break that it's down. a whole different show, right, but, Alan? And I'm, and I'm not going to get too far into it, but break that down because we're still on this, this thing of why is that a bad thing. Break that down. Johnny didn't send himself to, to Paris. Johnny has a dad that's a lawyer, okay? But Johnny has the ability to make it look like to all of his friends exactly. that follow him on high school that he's a hot shot. Exactly. And nobody can see behind that painted glass 
and that makes everybody else feel so better. It's all a facade. And it's, I think that that's yeah. why, here it says on that Time Magazine, or the other one, it says that you guys are um, more miserable than ever. Is it because maybe you see in all this stuff yeah. and everybody's life looks perfect and maybe it's that's why we see a rise in it bullying. It has to put a suicide. tremendous amount of pressure it's on you guys. pressure on y'all. I didn't have that pressure. I mean, it does. Well, it does. It does because... You know, let me think you're about trying to be somebody... You're, everybody's trying to one-up each other. Right, right. In this generation. Yes. A little bit. This, this gener it's, like you said, as far as entitlement, our generation... Our generation, the, ooh, this is good. <laughs> the difference between, the big difference between our generation and you guys' generation is the SD entitlement. And that comes because, like, we all want that attention and fame. We don't want to help each other. We just want that spot. You're out for you. Exactly. We're, we're selfish. We're selfish. Selfish is your word. But, I mean, to, to break it all down. Because, but that's like, that's not you a said, good thing, guys. And I, it's, you got those certain ones out there who are for the people who will help, you know, but when it comes down to it, majority of us, when we see Johnny in Paris, you know, even though it's a facade, when his dad really sent him to Paris, we want to be Johnny. So we do things to make it seem like we're doing something, you know, we're in Mexico, but truly we're just on the <laughs> behind the green screen, <laughs> so I'm saying? like stuff like that. It's that just, makes me sad for y'all. Does it not you? It's kind of and they don't, under, they don't know because they've only been here 20 years. I'm 41. I don't know. Much how older. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just think that is sad. But I also think this is going to be a great topic when you see us next time for our technology show. Thank you for being with us today. Stay tuned for some more talk about millennials and technology.